Check, 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 check. What's up, y'all? What's going on? It's Big Trav from the Big Trav and Q Show. What it do? There we go. Okay, we got it. We recording. There we go. We got. It. Okay, uh, we got a kind of a, a impromptu uh, Big Trav and Q Show today. Um, uh, on uh, Friday, was it Friday? Yeah, it was Friday. On Friday, we had the uh, interview with. Um, uh, Master P's uh, uh, former R&B group Sons of Funk and uh, we had on uh, Zoe and Rico and uh, uh, we had a pretty cool interview you know um, about a 30 minute interview and uh, you know uh, you know they they kind of said they peace you know we, we you know we had a, a pretty good time and so I um, I went to go post uh, I went I posted the interview on Instagram and um, and there were two other members of uh, the Sons of Funk, uh, JP and Dez. Dez was the uh, lead singer, and uh, and JP, uh, I'm not quite sure what role he played in it, but um, Dez uh, seen the interview, and uh, he wasn't happy with uh, he wasn't happy with how everything you know he wasn't happy with the interview. Let's just say that. <laughs> He wasn't happy with the interview. Um, and so uh, after he's seen it, he um, he DM me on uh, Instagram. And and a matter of fact, he 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 video chatted me, you know, uh, uh, on uh, on Instagram. And uh, and, you know, he just wanted to, you know, he kind of said that um, I guess he didn't agree with the things that was said in the interview. We, you know, we'll go that route. He's, he didn't agree with the things that was said in the interview. So he um, he wanted the opportunity to uh, you know to come interview with us, and um, and uh, he uh, we got we got JP to come along. So uh, and uh, uh, also uh, JP had also DM me and uh, and kind of backed up everything that that Dez says. Uh, um, obviously, there's uh, you know, I mean, we always see you know uh, the aftermath of. Uh, all of these, you know, when you in a group, we always see these groups like New Edition, uh, the Supremes, the Whispers, Isley Brothers, whatever. You know, um, we always see the aftermath. We always hear about the aftermath later on, years later. You know about why it why it didn't work out. You know, you know turmoil. Uh, you know, and some of the groups, you know, work through it, and uh, some of them can't. Um, I I didn't really know when I. You know, when I um, reached out to him for an interview, um, I, you know, I had no idea that, you know, that the issues that was going on with him, um, I, I, uh, I got in touch with Rico. Rico was the most, uh, he was the most uh, available one. He was the most available one uh, out of them, you know. Um, so uh, I, I know I like their songs. I love Pushing Inside. I love I Got to Hook Up. You know, those were some dope songs. So, uh, you know, and that's what I try to do on, on our, uh, on our podcast is, uh, I try to, you know, I try to get people on that I'm interested in, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's more, you know, it's more fun when you get somebody, you know, that, that you like that she was into and, um, you know, but, but I can get up for the people that I'm not that familiar with as well, or the people that I wasn't in, that into, you know, just do the research. Well, anyway, JP and Dez, they're coming on at six. Uh, we got about 15 minutes. So they're they're coming on at six and uh, and basically they're gonna you know they want to tell their side of the story. Um, I'm not quite sure what 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 issue they had with with Rico and what Zoe uh, had in the interview, um, but we're gonna find out. <laughs> we're gonna find out, man. So uh, shout out to um, my man Hollywood uh, and uh, and Joe uh, Hyatt. You know, they were, uh, you know, well, they were in the studio when I, when I done the interview and then we done the, uh, big Trav and Hollywood show right after. So, um, you know, and, uh, so we, we, we had a good time, man. You know, I want to thank, uh, Joe Hyatt for coming on again, uh, who's the coach of the, uh, glass city tigers, which is the, uh, semi-pro football team that Hollywood owns. He is the CEO big baller. So, uh, uh, you know what I, I got to get my sound effects out because <laughs> I was I was supposed I was supposed to play a sound effect when that happened. 
That's right. Yeah. yeah. What's up? I see Hollywood checking in. What's up, Tay Lee? Can, could you guys, can you guys hear my, hear my sound effects? I'm just making sure we good. What? Can y'all yeah. hear those? Yo, <laughs> 2021, baby. We Can straight doing that? this, you know? Big Trevor in Hollywood, chop it Yo. up, it's a sight <laughs> to see. You can't step Yo, to the glass city, city, city G's. Big Trevor in Hollywood, chop it up, it's a sight <laughs> to see. You can't step to the glass right, city G's. Right. Yes, the Big Trevor in Hollywood show, Fridays at 6 p.m. Make sure you tune in. Um, uh, this Friday, we, we got another guest, uh, this Friday we have, you know what? Hey, Hollywood, help me out, man. Calvin. I know his name is Calvin. I know what is Calvin's last name? What's up, Sadie? I see you. Let's get Calvin's last name so we can, uh, you know, do the, the proper, uh, uh, Jackie Hudson. What's up, Jackie? Jackie Hudson just joined us. Um, if you're just joining us, what's going on? This is sort of a, um, uh, uh impromptu uh last minute interview um on friday we had two of the members of uh, uh master p's r b group the sons of funk uh my interview those guys the other two guys or one of the other guys the lead singer matter of fact des he's seen the interview and um uh, he has some issues uh calvin morero that's calvin Mur murel okay that's who we have on friday uh, hollywood says well anyway uh, so Dez has some issues with the interview and he just wanted his opportunity uh, to come on with us and uh, kind of tell his side of the story. And then, uh, and, and he has a project that he's working on and he's going to promote that. And, and the other member, it was four of them. Uh, the other member, JP, JP uh, uh, is uh, joining him as well. And they're going to give their side of the story. And, and, uh, and JP has a project as well too and uh and i i have both of their songs here um if they want them play you know we'll you know we'll do a little sample on them uh and uh if not you know hey we'll see but uh but we ought to but we're we're we're, we're equal opportunists here at the big trav and in, in hollywood and the big trav and q show you know we we want an opportunity to give everybody you know they they say so we don't like stories being one-sided so like i said uh des and and JP is is coming on the show, and uh, and they're going to give their two cents in on on uh, what just happened with the Sons of Funk, uh, Masterpiece R and B group. So uh, it looks like somebody is ready to go. Uh, let me see. We got ten minutes to go. Let me let me see. All right. All right. Let me uh, let me throw this. All right. There we go. Like I said, once again, uh, on Friday, we'll have uh, Calvin Murrell. Uh, we'll be interviewing him. Uh, I already talked to Hollywood. Hollywood said that uh, that he, he bringing a bottle through. Uh, oh, oh, no, he, he said he was bringing the 1738. So he bringing the 1738. So we're looking forward to that, man. Uh, that's one of the requirements when you come through the Big Trav in, in Hollywood. I, I got to get used to saying it. The Big Trav in Hollywood show. You got to bring a bottle. Shout out to uh, to uh, uh, Brad Fields. Uh, Brad Fields. He brought us a bottle of 1942, and and then we had uh, Joe Joe Hyatt. He came through uh, last Friday. He brought us the the Michael Jordan tequila, um, Sin, Sin, Sin Cora, and he bought us the the, the 160 dollar bottle. We wasn't expecting that, man. But we was uh, we've been talking about it. We've been trying to get it. We've been trying to get it on the uh, get on the show. But we didn't want to fork up the money for it. But Joe came through for us, man. We got a taste and we loved it, man. And uh, I don't know about Hollywood, man, but I'm not a tequila person. But but that tequila, man, that was what was up, man. So uh, looks like we got. Looks what's like up? We, with what's going on with you, man? Yeah, you see me? Oh yeah, I can see you nice and clear. Beanie oh, yeah, on. there you go. What's going on? Man? <laughs> Look at you with your pesky stuff. Oh, boy, you something else. Oh, it's all good, man. It's the music business. Got to have a little fun, right? Yeah, yeah, a little bit of fun, man. W welcome yeah. to the Big Trav and Q Show, man. 
Hey, thank you. I appreciate it. Do me a second. I was just getting set up. Do me a favor. Give me like, I'm on my wife's take, laptop. I didn't want to be back in my little office, but give me to six and I'll be right back on with y'all. Okay. just wanted to make sure we good to go. Okay, take your time. All right, I appreciate it, bro. All right, all right. Okay. Um, yeah, we just uh, had uh, uh, JP join us and we waiting for Dez. So uh, uh, we'll get this going. Like I said, uh, you know, we had to, we had uh, uh, Rico and Zoe on of uh, Sons of Funk on Friday, and uh, and you know, and we I thought it was a great interview, you know. But when I when I asked those guys to come on, you know, you just never know what's going on, in uh, in, in the dynamics of a of a uh, of a, a singing group, you know, you you don't know what's going on, and and what we've come to find out, uh, what we what we've come to find out from watching Unsung is that you know it's always something, it's always money, you know, always jealousy. You know, uh, you know, whatever it is, you know, the group split up, you know, uh, and uh, but, you know, you know, but the, the good thing about this situation is that, you know, uh, it looked like all the guys are are, are, are thriving after the situation. Um, you know, uh, like I said, uh, Rico and Zoe, it doesn't look like. Uh, oh, yeah, I'm sorry. Rico, Zoe and uh, uh, Rico's son, uh, RJ, RJ is the lead singer now. And they're continuing as uh, Sons of Funk. Um, uh, I heard I heard one of one of their new singles called "Stupid." I really like that. You know, "Stupid" is really nice. And then um, uh, I checked out. I went on uh, JP's uh, uh, Instagram, and he has a nice little guitar cutout that I really appreciate. And then uh, and then Dez, uh, he is with a group called the Backwoods, and they got a song called "Riding That Bull." You know, that's, uh, uh, you know, that sounds pretty good. It's, it's along the lines of that Blanco Brown got to do the two-step and all of that stuff. It's along those lines or, or maybe even Little Nas X, you know, it's a long kind of a hip hop country, uh, track. So, uh, you know, we'll, uh, I'm expecting them to, you know, to, to talk about those projects they got going on now. That's, that's really the, that's the purpose of, uh, of the interview today. Um, listen, man, if you, if you rock with me, uh, please share this, share this post, please share it. You know, uh, part of the, the podcast game is followers, you know, and, and, and getting exposed to new audiences, man. So that's, so like I said, if you rock with me, you know, share this on your page and, uh, and that, that'll, that'll do, uh, that'll do the, that'll do us a good, a nice favor. So we'll, we'll roll with that. Uh, let me see who we got in the comments. What's up, Vanessa Austin. AJ Natives, okay, you know, good to see everybody checking in. Once again, uh, the, oh, oh, well, we also got a programming change too. Uh, this Friday, I'm sorry, this Thursday, the Big Travin Hollywood show isn't this Friday. It's going to be this Thursday. It's going to be this Thursday at six, this Thursday at six. I got something going on on Friday. So thanks, Jay. Um, so uh, Calvin Murrell, uh, our guest will be uh, Thursday, not Friday, Thursday, Friday. I'll do a promo in a few minutes. And uh, so everybody be up to speed on that, you know, so only thing I heard is uh, 1738. So, <laughs> oh man. So, and, and listen, it's, it's Monday, no drinks today, man. I only drink on Friday. I'm sorry, Friday. Well, th it'll be Thursday today, or this week. Be Thursday this week, man. I don't, I don't drink until Hollywood come around. Hollywood make me drink. <laughs> uh, what we got?
Okay, I just got a uh, uh, inbox from Des. Uh, you know, he's just getting the time right. They're actually uh, in Louisiana. At least Des is in Louisiana. So he was just checking with me, making sure that uh, it was five o'clock Louisiana time. Louisiana is on Central time. We on Eastern time. So, right, same here in Texas. I'm in Texas. Dad's you in, in Texas? Uh huh. So, so that means you a Dallas Cowboy fan, right? That's all. Right. <laughs> <laughs> we'll move on. <laughs> we'll move on. I'm a, I'm a well, hardcore. Know, I'm a hardcore cowboy fan, man. No, no disrespect. I saw that hat and felt sorry for you. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you, so, so you a Saints fan? You a Saints fan? No, not at all. Um, I'm actually a Frisco uh, 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 fan. That's a whole nother, whole nother so, story. Forty. So you with, so you with E40 and Money B in them, huh? <laughs> yeah man yeah man plus you know you know i'm here in texas i moved back to texas around 15 16 probably around 15 right and i was out in cali up until around that time so not That's not what's dallas up, man. That's yeah what's up. yeah what's up what's up Dez? can you hear us okay he, he getting his audio together okay okay cool okay he getting his audio together man it's some some time it takes a minute man but but everything going okay i, I checked out your single man on i, I checked out the single i like it what's oh, going okay. on you, you heard my music i appreciate that that uh you're so naughty yeah that's nice man i really i really like that man what, i appreciate that what's going on with you des what's up what's up what's up y'all can see me yeah, oh, yeah, see there you, you. hear you. <laughs> got the, you, you got the five o'clock beard popping off. I see you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, man, you know. <laughs> hey, well, hey, well, check check this out, man. Thank thanks both of you guys for joining the Big Trav and Q show. And uh I was just explaining to my listeners and my watchers that that we had uh the other two members, uh, uh Rico and Lonzo, uh, I'm sorry, Zoe over on, on Friday. And uh, and you guys just wanted the opportunity to, to kind of come on and and uh, and kind of tell tell your side of the story and and uh, and let us know what you guys are working on. So um, uh, I just want to fill everybody in. Hold hold on, Des is going in and out. You, you okay, Des? Yeah, yeah. Somebody was trying to call me, man. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but, <laughs> before, face, but, face before we, but before we get started, you know, they, I want to apologize to Des, man. I mean, I was. I really, I was really, I was roasting, man. And uh, I really want to apologize for that, man. I really did, man. That was, that was really disrespectful. Uh, you know, the way, you know, the way I had, uh, you know, came off with the guys in the, in the interview, man. I just want to apologize to you, man. Oh, it's all good, man. It's cool. You know, I don't, um, you know, I don't, I don't be tripping on that. You know, it's, it, it, it's, it's all good. It's cool. It's well, cool. Well, only thing I want to say, I'm, I, I want to give a reason for my response because, you know, okay, think the way I looked at it, I said, man, No Limit is one of the hardest labels in the world. I meant, uh, and I mean, just, they was just tearing up shit. And then, and then to see one, somebody from No Limit, you know, go into the country world, it, it just, it, it, it surprised me. It was just, you know, uh, you know, I don't know. I mean, you know, it just, it just surprised me. You know what I'm saying? And, and so that yeah. was my that was my reaction, you know, so. Well, see, the thing about it is, is with me, you know, I grew up, you know, my whole family with us, we, we grew up listening to all kinds of music, you know, country music, pop, rap, R&B, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Rock and roll. I didn't, I didn't, I, I didn't heard it and grew up on it, listened to it and did it all, you know what I'm saying? So right. I'm not one box, right. you know what I'm I, I do R and B and I I can do anything, man. I'm just musical, you know what I'm saying. So it's no limitations, you know, when it comes to the music. You know what I'm saying. Right. I don't think anybody should be, you know, pigeonholed into one little genre of music. You know what I mean? Because it's bigger than that. Okay. Um, and let me further say that uh, you know I did. I went back and I looked at the interview and and uh, and you know what? I really didn't. I mean, because I'm about to ask you what what was your issues with the interview. Um, besides, you know, me roasting, I mean, did you, I mean, did y'all have, let's start with you, Des. So were, were there, so, um, were there, what did you have an issue? Did you have an issue with anything they said on Friday? I mean, when you seen the interview, did you have an issue with anything they said? Um, uh, well, far as what they said, far as, um, about the, the creation of, of the song, uh, pushing inside of you, that's what I had a problem. And then, you know, the little, I kind of feel like 
you know, you said what you said, and then they kind of like egged it on as far right. as that situation. But as far as what they said, you know, I don't feel like they was being truthful, you know, with a lot of things that they were saying. But this been going on for a long time. You know, they've been doing a lot of interviews and putting, you know, false statements out there that ain't true. You know what I'm saying? You know, as far as like we're pushing inside of you, you know what I'm saying? Me and Rico wrote that record together. We produced it. You know what I'm saying? I had a little studio set up in my bedroom. We produced that song together. And um, cause Rico couldn't really play guitar that good. He could he could play, but he couldn't stay really stay in rhythm. So I used to take him and and let him play parts and we pieced it together um piece by piece and put it in my sampler. My uh I had an Insonic uh EPS 16. I used to take all of those guitar parts and put it put it in the um in the drum machine and like just place it together. You know what I'm saying? And um we came up with that thing together, man. I don't know why this dude steady out here talking about he wrote it himself. In <laughs> man, right, right, right. Oh, okay. Well, I tell you what. Let me. You know. You know what? I want you guys define. Okay, when you was with Sons of Funk, define your 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 role. Your role in the group. What was your role in the group? Besides, I know you was the lead singer. So, okay. Exactly. So, so you you were the producer as well. Yeah, basically with the Sons of Funk, it started with me. And then me and my brother, we started the group. So Rico used to sing with my cousin, Mark Soak around, you know, cause uh, Rico's, you know, a lot older than us. So he used to sing with my cousin, you know, before we all met. So that's how we knew Rico. So uh, once that they broke up and that didn't go well, years later, Rico found uh, me and my brother in Oakland and we hooked up and Rico used to come by to our house on the, on riding his 10 speed over there. <laughs> and, um, he used to come in there and we used to, you know, start messing with the music. And then, um, well, well, hold on, hold on. Before Rico, before Rico, I mean, before I, I, I skipped the part. So before Rico, uh, uh, Zoe, which is Josh, they call him Zoe, but it's, I call him Josh, but, um, we went to high school together. Okay. So, uh, Went to Skyline High School together, and that's how I met Zoe. You know, um, being in the um, in the music room, you know, he used to play piano and all that. And I used to invite him down to the studio studio sessions. We would skip school, get my Camaro, and go down to the studio and and um, you know do some sessions or whatever. And we just start making songs, and um, and um, that's how he got incorporated into the group. Hey, and hey, hold on, wait on. a minute, man. You, you can't brush over that. You had you had a Camaro in high school? What the hell? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. I had a little Camaro. Yeah, I used to ride up there, man, you know. Um oh. you wasn't you wasn't you what you you wasn't you wasn't trapping, was you, man? Oh, uh, no, nah, no. Nah. My, my mom had a little bread, you know. Oh, okay, okay, okay. All right. Yeah. She was hooking us up. So a matter of fact, you know, that's where we used to have all our um we had a big house out there in Oakland. We used to have all our rehearsals over there. That's where the Sons of Funk started. You know what I'm saying? We used to make the beats. I used to make all the beats in there, rehearsal, everything. You know what I'm saying? We used to run up my mom's electricity bill. You know what I'm saying? And um, and all that. But um, that's how I met uh, Zoe from high school. And then Rico came along later on. And I incorporated them two into the group. So it's like, that's how the Sons of Funk started, you know, back in the day. And then uh, we started making music from there all together collectively. We started making music, um, um, you know. Um, then later on, a little, little bit later after that, we met uh, this guy named um, Rick. Because Sons of Funk used to be five originally. It was okay. five men. So with Rick, um, as soon as we got the deal with No Limit, uh, Rick, you know, he, he, got, he got murdered, you know. And he was actually, um, I, I, he was the lead singer and I was the second. Okay. So, uh, you know, he he got, you know, he passed away, man. And then, um, you know, right when we got signed, man, it was like a big, it was crazy, man. It was like nothing I ever would thought, think would happen. You know, we got all the way to the, to the, you know, the big thing that we all wanted and got the deal. And then this dude get murdered. So all, everything fell on me. You know what I mean? far as with the music you know I had to produce and I produced about 
shoot, 90% of that album that we put out. You know, that's, I was- That's what I, I wanted was, to know. That's what I was trying to get to. I was trying to find out what percentage of the album did you produce? Okay, 90%. About, about 90%, you know, and, um, you know, I did a lot of the singing, you know, majority of the singing too on the songs, you know, everything just kind of fell into my lap because I had to, you know, we got pushed in a, in a position where I had to step up. And, um, you know, that's how far as that went, you know, um, and we ended up hooking up with Master, you know, with Master P. We, we didn't get another member, um, um, you know, right away. Um, later on, probably around, what, when is it like 2000? 2000, 2001. Yeah, 2000, 2001 is when um, I met JP and, uh, and a lot of people don't know because they didn't have social media back then. So we couldn't broadcast stuff like, like they do nowadays. So right. JP has officially been a member of the Sons of Funk since that time until now. Okay. You right. know, people didn't know that, you know, we, we got songs that we recorded, you know, you know, years ago, we got like so much catalog, you know what I'm saying? We got, song after song that the, the public haven't even heard yet from the sons of funk and um but it was um it's been so crazy man with the group it's been it's <laughs> <laughs> okay we, got some, so, we need to do a damn documentary <laughs> yeah that's what i'm saying man this is you know what this has turned out to be more interesting than i thought it was man you guys are really giving me giving my fans they 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 own this man. They 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 wanted. I, I posted a little promo saying y'all was coming on to respond. They was like, oh shit. <laughs> so um so J so JP came right. after after the first album was done. Right. Okay. 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 Um. So JP uh, uh J JP tell me about your uh you know when you joined. I mean what was going yeah, we, on and you know can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I can hear you. You keep you you keep cutting out. I okay. guess people keep calling okay, cool. you. Yeah, like blowing my phone up, man. Yeah, <laughs> man. <laughs> Let's be watching. Well, I was at, I was asking JP, uh, you know, to kind of give his his side on the beginning. Tell, tell me your tell me your side of the story on the beginning. Well, first of all, um, thank you for apologizing because Dez is my brother, so I don't want right. to have to come see y'all. <laughs> that says a lot about you, so thank you for that. And no, no problem, man, bro. to keep it all real. Um, like Dez said, um, 2000, 2001, when I got in the group, I think things with No Limit was kind of slowing down and was slowly coming to a halt. And uh, me and Dez just had a common affinity with music. We had a certain chemistry. And so, um, you know, we started making some songs together, like he said, some unreleased material. I think Zoe was around at that time too, um, Dez, you brought him around. Rico was still in Baton Rouge at that time. So um, when I got in the group, like I said, things had kind of slowed down, but Big Dez was still banging because he had, um, I know he had produced the most of the Sons of Funk album, but he had half of another album already ready to go. And so when I got in the group, me and him started recording more. And I don't know, we put out some singles, some independent stuff back in 04. We even put out some independent stuff back in 14. So make a long story short, when I got in the group, my role was I am a singer and musician. Dez is a hell of a producer. I produce a little bit, but I didn't produce any Sons of Funk stuff. I played guitar on some things, played keys, you know, also wrote and sung. And so that's what Dez pretty much, you know, brought me in the group and put me down for. Okay. Okay. Let's, let's go to this. Okay. Now wh what, now what exactly happened with the group? I mean, what, what, I mean, was it a breakup? Y'all just went y'all separate ways. What exactly happened? Well, uh, what really happened, sh should I give them the real? You want me to give them yeah. the real? I want the real. I want the yeah. real. <laughs> it's time. Right. I'm going to give them the real. Give me the real. Well, I mean, we have some, the group, it was, um, we was having some discrepancies, you know what I'm saying? And, we wasn't talking for a while and, you know, it was me and my brother. We wasn't talking to um, Zoe and we wasn't talking to uh, Rico. So we was kind of just all doing our own thing for a minute and everybody was in LA. And, um, you know, it was kind of like at a standstill because there was so much drama going on. It was, you know, with Master P, man, and it's like, we used to get into it with Master P because you know, Master P was real controlling, man. He didn't want you working with other people unless he approved it. You know, he didn't, like a lot of people wanted to work with the group. You know what I'm saying? I, I recall, I remember M, M, uh, MJ, 
MJG, a, uh, a ball MJG went to work with us and all kind of other people. But P used to uh, have all these feuds going on with people, man. And and he, you know, he didn't want us. We're like, we want, I want to work with Too Short. He he didn't like Too Short. He didn't like R. Kelly. Wow, you know, so never he had, heard that. <laughs> he had all these with all these different people, man. And he wanted us to fall in line with it. But I'm like, man, we we R. B. Man, we not we. We trying to get out of here, man. We trying to make it. We ain't got no discrepancies with all these people. You know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like um, that was a kind of a conflict. A conflict, man. He didn't want us to have a manager. You know what I'm saying? That probably would have helped the group. What he do you didn't mean want a manager. I thought a manager. I thought everybody had a manager. I mean, he didn't want to have no manager, dude. Wow. That's a pro that's a problem. Yeah, that's a big problem. You know what I'm saying? So it's like. When you when you try to talk to that dude, you know what I'm saying? He was always like he would have a big attitude about it or whatever, you know, be like, you know, why y'all coming with, you know, talking about this? And I'm like, this is like simple stuff, man, that you're supposed to handle your business, you know what I'm saying? But um so one time, man, um we decided we got in contact with Pete and we was like, uh, we want to talk to you, you know, try to hash things out and uh, you know, get things right you know, with the group so we could push forward with the second album. So um, we met P, man, and at the time, it was me and my brother was at a video shoot. I forget whose video shoot it was. It was me and my brother, and then uh, Rico showed up by himself. So uh, Zoe wasn't there. So uh, me and my brother uh, met with Master P and Rico, and uh, P was like, okay, man, um, I'm going to give y'all some money, man. Y'all go in the studio. You and your brother go record five songs, six songs, and then Rico and Zoe, y'all go record six songs, and then y'all come back to the table. You know, since y'all can't get along, we'll do it like this. Y'all come back wow. to the table with all songs. Wow. And we'll so Pete cut me, he cut me and my brother a check for like 20 grand. He cut uh Rico a check for 20 grand for him and Zoe. So um Eric, you know, things was cool, whatever. Um, wait a minute, where, 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 wait a minute, where, where, where is JP money at, man? JP, oh, no, JP? no, he's telling you how oh, I'm there. This is before me. This oh, is how oh, oh, he's okay, leading okay. up to got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Work got with it. Him. Got it. Got it. This is prior to 2000, right, Dez? This is probably what, yeah, Dez, 98? Right, right, right. Okay, got it. Got it. Got it. Go, okay, go ahead. So, um, me and my brother went and bought a, we went and bought a studio. We bought studio equipment. We bought, like they was using ADATs back then. We bought a microphone, ADATs, mix board, you know what I'm saying? The whole nine. We bought all this stuff, everything, man. We bought a good mic. We bought an Avalon preamp and everything, man. But so we did our, we recorded all our songs and um, we was ready, man. You know, we had our stuff together. And then um, Josh and Rico had recorded some stuff that was kind of like, it wasn't really up to par. It wasn't. And then it was kind of like not done, but you know, cause they not really sing. They they was they not the singers, you know what I'm saying? They right, was all right. like, you know, in the background or whatnot, you know what I'm Got saying? It. Doing it. moves or whatever. So it wasn't it wasn't really, you know, it had to be kind of doctored up and fixed. Right. So right. they decided to come to my house because I saw where I had the studio set up. And we all met over there and um some some came out about um, you know, cause jo I think Zoe came in and he was like, "Hey man, dang, y'all got a whole studio, man." He said, "How y'all get all? How y'all get all this?" I was like, "Man, we uh we bought it with the money that uh P gave us. It's the you know part of the twenty grand. We went and bought the studio stuff." He's like, "You didn't you didn't know about that?" He's like, "Hell no, I didn't know." And then, then all of a sudden, Rico came. Rico come walking in with a brand new cell phone and all kind of little stuff. You know, I guess he went to the store or whatever, and then him and Rico, um, he asked Rico about the money, and he was like, he 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 said something about he was holding it for him or something. And he was, <laughs> hell, all hell broke loose. Zoe immediately jumped on Rico, started wailing on him, dude, oh. whooping on his ass, bro. Oh man, and, <laughs> I, I swear to Rico, God, hold on, Rico done him dirty like that, man. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. I'm dirty like that. Uh, then all of a sudden, bro, 
Rico running out the house and Josh is Josh dragging on this dude. He dragging Whoa. on his like <laughs> remember the Terminator when they cut his yeah. body off? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> like that. He on this nigga like the Terminator trying to get him. <laughs> this so, is hilarious. Uh, man. And then, you know, everything was after that happened, it was crushed. You know what I'm saying? Rico was just we didn't see him no more. And then all of a sudden he ended up moving, <laughs> he ended up, he ended up moving to Baton Rouge. You know oh, what I'm man. saying? Oh wow. And, uh, and he been he uh, he had left the group, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So it was just um me and Josh and then um and then uh my brother and then you know we was recording songs and then we met then that's eventually when we met um ended up meeting up meeting up with um with JP. And then uh he was incorporated into the group and then we you know we you know it started moving from there, but you know the group was going. For, I had to. I I've been working in this group for man year, many years, man, many many years. You know why Rico wasn't even in it. Rico was just gone, man. He did. I guess he just decided he didn't want to do it no more. Yeah, and can I be truthful, Des? We didn't get back with Rico until 2013, but he came out for one photo shoot that we did. Remember, like around 2002, and then right. we didn't. We didn't even really. Because you want to tell it was Rico ideal, I give it to him in 13 to kind of get everybody back together so that the original members could, you know, go ahead and do music. So kind of pick up from there, Dez, and tell him what happened once we got down to the match. Hold on, hold on. Now, before we go to 2013, I got a I got a question. Who was who who was in the pushing inside video? Who was all in the video? The pushing inside video was me, my brother, Zoe, and Rico. Oh, okay. What about I got the hookup? I got it was it was still us four. Me, still y'all four. Okay, uh -huh. okay. And yeah. so and so Rico done all of this after the after the album and after the videos. He 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 done the the the, the twenty thousand dollar thing. That was after all of this or before all of this. That was after all that. After uh, all. The you know the video, the success, but I got the hookup and all that. Right, right. Yeah, that was after. That well, was I after. Tell you, back it up because I'm I'm missing the initial contract with Master P. Was it were, was it an initial contract with Master P? Yeah, yeah. We what how that happened was uh, we you know we all was from the Bay Area, Oakland, California. Right. And we, um, me and my brother, and Rico got in my truck. And we uh we drove down from Oakland to um to LA, and we was all deciding we you know we was gonna pack up and move. We was like, man, we got we got to get out of here because ain't nothing happening here. It's just too much hate going on. Wasn't nobody trying to help us. Right. So we all just said, man, we got to go to LA. So we packed up, put everything in my truck. We drove down there, and um we knew this girl that was living down there. She was staying in the jungles. You know what I'm saying? The blood hood in the jungles. Right. 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 So we drove up in there and we was we uh we got there like in the morning time. It was like maybe like eight o'clock in the morning or something like that. Right. And uh we drove in and we started unpacking the bags and stuff. And um we was like everybody's like tired because they want to go to sleep. We was like, no nah, man, we, we gotta start, we gotta go get on this right now. Ain't no time for no sleep. Right. So we ended up going to priority records. And then that's where we ended up meeting Master P at Priority Records. We met him there. And uh, um, when we got there, when we first got there, we we just, uh, we took, we, we was asking Priority, can we take a meeting with him? You know, and um, we went up there, we met with one of the executives. We went up there, played our music, and he, they didn't give us a deal. They was just like, uh, this is cool, man, but we don't know what to do with it. You know, right. and... Uh, we as we was going down the elevator, we was like, all right, cool. We was all, you know, disappointed. And as we going down the elevator, we get to the bottom of the elevator and Master P is coming in. And that's where we met him. And we was like, P man, check, you know, we got we got some good Let's music, go. man. Got our music. And um, you know, he was like, All right, man, come on, come on. You know, so we got we get back in the elevator, except we in the elevator with Master P this time. Dope, go back dope. To to the damn near the same office that we just left out of, play the same music, and P said, I don't wanna fuck with y'all, I'm, I'm, I'm interested. Yo, and that's, that's what's up. That's what, <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> that's how we got that deal. <laughs> now, now, how was that initial contract? You know, you know, I, you hear all these stories on Unsung about uh, everybody first contract wasn't right. Everybody got a whack first contract. Were you guys happy with the first contract as far as the money and everything? To be honest, the we were so <laughs> we were so um, I, I guess the word desperate. Right. You know what I'm saying? We get on. We weren't even tripping on the contract. Right, right. It's just like everything happened so fast. You know what I'm saying? We did the contract. And I don't, you know, at that point in time, I don't even, I don't give a damn what was on that contract. Right. On that. <laughs> just, <laughs> you know, just put so, me on. Just, just just put me on, huh? Yeah, we just wanted to get put on. So right, right. We gave him pushing inside of you. And then um we gave him the song and man about time we got back home to LA we get a call from Master P and it's like the song it had blown up in Louisiana and New Orleans and yo Edward, the song was like taking off and he was like yo. damn so then we ended up um he sent us some more money and we ended up we flew down to Baton Rouge and um we was down in Baton Rouge for about six months working with all the no limit artists you know Silk and Fiend C, you know C Murder uh, everybody, we was getting on everybody project. Uh, um, side note, man, I done a lot of smashing to push it inside, man. I just want you to know that, dog. <laughs> 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 yeah, that that, that was a dope track, man. That was a dope track, man. Hey, mm -hmm. salute, baby. That was a dope track, man. You done your thing. I was just telling my wife, man, this is this is real talk, Des and JP. My, my wife had never heard that. She said, she said, what are they known for? And I told her, I said, well, push it inside of me or push it inside. And I said, it's a classic. I said, I said, it's along the size. I said, you would, I said, when you hear it, it's like when you hear come and talk to me by Jodeci. I kind of threw it on that level, man. And I said, I'm gonna let him know that, man, because it's a classic. It's, it's one of them songs. When you hear that bitch, you'd be like, oh, that's my shit. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man, appreciate so, it, man. so listen, man, great job, man. Your singing was dope, man. I swear, man. Can and you, you hear him hit that run it? on it? That's what man be loving. He hit that run on Lizzie. <laughs> yeah, with yeah, that, man. that's that's what that when me and Rico was in the room creating that song, that's how we really because we was doing so many different styles, and that's how we really found our style because of the Isley brothers. Cause I used to that's dope. They, I used to listen to the Isley Brothers at a young age, so I was I can like, tell. I, was, "I can, I can I was, tell." I was playing around, <laughs> and I was, I think I was singing, um, what was that, um, "Footsteps in the Dark" or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. I would start doing all these <laughs> melodic things, and then we start. Show is damn good to me when I'm pushing inside of you. That boy still got it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Start just going through all these little things, you know what I'm saying? And that's how that came up. So that whole style was like definitely influenced, Isley Brother influence. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? Stop your music because yours delayed so he can sing it. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was just a little delay. Oh, okay. Des, do me a favor, man. Go ahead and hit that opening line for me, man. You know, I know it's going to be good, girl. <laughs> I can feel your water streaming down all around. Here's my love, and I'm qualified in, in your <laughs> <laughs> Hey, hey, I'm calling my wife. Hey, baby, hey, hey, warm up the bed, baby, because I'm about to come up there, man. Dad's just got me in the mood, man. <laughs> That was dope, man. I really appreciate that, man. Uh, mm. Let me see here. Let me go here. Uh, um, I tell you, where are we gonna go from here? So, uh, so the group split up. Now you guys are doing your own thing. I tell you, let's start with JP because JP, we ain't, we ain't heard a lot out of JP. JP, um, talk about the the single you got out, the music that you, the, the song that you sent to me. Go ahead and talk about that and what's going on with that, right quick. Oh, the little song you saw. Okay, yeah. 
Well, man, I, I haven't really just fully released it yet. I came up with that little idea, came up with the hook, just in there jamming on the guitar, man, and just being myself. In fact, um, I owe a lot of credit to Dez for that. I could pluck around a little bit, but Dez would like play Tony's for me. He knew other great guitar players, so he kept that kept that sound in my ear. So over the years, I picked up and just, you know, did some stuff that I've learned over the years and put together something that I feel good about. Put a little auto tune on it to give it a little modern feel. But probably here in the next couple of months, I'll do a little pushing with it and push, you know, put together a video to it. That's about it, man. You're yeah, yo, I appreciate that. Yo, I appreciate it. Yo, JP, man, that's nice, baby. I appreciate it. You got me out up in and burning like a heat wave. Getting buck and necking up. It's not, it's not copywritten yet, is it? Because, you know, Facebook. Oh, yeah, everything good. I own all my stuff. Okay, okay, stuff okay. We okay. good, oh, baby. It's okay. masters on the okay. hard drive. We oh, good. Okay, <laughs> all right. I'm on Facebook to be like, oh, you can't play that. Nah, you good. <laughs> now, let me see here. Where we at? Where we, that, here we go. And, and that's that vintage Sons Right, right. I have to give credit. That's why I said that's you hear that sound, man. That's that's big Dez lacing me, man. Like showing me how to, yeah, because it's a way you got to mix modern, modern good, you got to mix guitar with modern, you know, drums, and then it's a way to do the hook around it. So I learned a lot from the funk, baby. He baptized me in the funk, baby. You know, that that guitar, that guitar, that that, that that's dope, man. That's dope. Oh, I appreciate that's, it. That's, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a another reason why the group is separate because. Me and JP, we kind of stick to the roots of Sons of Funk, the sound, you know what I'm saying? If we're going to do Sons of Funk, we're not, right. We're not going to, we, we, it's going to be Sons of Funk and we can incorporate what they're doing now, you know, with the new wave, but you got to stick to the script with the with the sound. That's what the people love, you know what I mean? They exactly. Wanna, you got to keep that. You can't just change up the whole thing, man. Okay, we're going right. we to we get off track right quick because, you know, Des, when I was doing your research, I noticed that you sued Tiger for the Molly beat, man. You want to uh, elaborate on that a little bit? What, what was all that about? Oh man, that was a whole, <laughs> a whole another thing, man. It's, it's, you know, I did, a, I did the track, and they didn't want to pay, you know, young money, cash money. You know, baby, you don't like to pay nobody. Wow. So it was, I was, I was just another person in line trying to get paid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, you know that was um that actually that track was like I, I'm actually proud. I, I mean, it's kind of like it was so much drama with that track, but then on top of it, I'm kind of proud of it because it was something I did. One of the things that I did outside of No Limit that went platinum that that only it I was dope. You know, that was a right? dope treat. Was that all you? That production was all you? That was all me. Oh um, man, that was what's that was a dope track, man. You did you did your thing on that, man. That was dope. Appreciate that. Appreciate damn, that. Man. Man. You know what? Damn, you know, we we sleeping on Dez as a producer, I'm man. I'm telling you, man. Hey, Dez is sleeping be, hey, on listen, Dez, man. man. Hey, he being very modest. Dez is up there, man. Like you talk about, and I say this very humbly. You talk about Dr. Dre and Timberland. Dez, if he sent you some stuff, man, you'd be very surprised. Man. I can tell, man. Yeah, you'd be very surprised. You know what? I got it. After going through this interview, man, I want to say, Dez, man, thank you for not coming on on here ripping my ass for roasting you on that shit. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know what to expect, man. I thought you was going to come over here and get me, man. <laughs> oh, no, it's so good. I mean, thank you. That, that song, man, it's like it, it, we, we did that song. We didn't know it was going to even do what it did, man. It, it got, that's, I mean, it blew up on TikTok. You know, we got me and my my boy Jay. We got a we got a record deal off of that. You know what I'm saying? We uh we doing more music is coming. You know, so it's just the fans, man. They've been like the country fans is just crazy, going crazy well, over there. Well, well, hold like, hold on. Let's 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 set let's set it up because everybody don't know what we're talking about. Um, uh, talk about um the 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 decision to go that route. What what was the decision process and going that route? Because I wanted to, 
do something, you know, different musical, musical wise, because all the other stuff I already conquered, you know what I'm saying? You know, right. no limit. We, we, all the stuff they doing is we, we, we did it already. I, right. I did it. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing more I can do. I didn't have success doing that. So it's like, I wanted to do something different. You know what I mean? I wanted to take my, uh, you know, my skills or whatever you want to call it and, and apply it to something new and see what I could do there. You know, I was like, well, I already did this rap stuff, trap, whatever. I did that, had success. I did the R&B. If I could do the country and I could be successful in that, then that's just like another another level for me. You know what I'm saying? So you was just expanding your your umbrella, right? Just expanding, huh? Right, just expanding the umbrella. That's, that's it. You know, you know what I mean? What? I, I just I just thought about something, man. Wait a minute, man. You was you was on the label with Beast by the Pound. Did you ever fuck with Beast by the Pound? Yeah, yeah. I I I messed with Beast, but you know, Beats by the Pound was already doing their thing. They was already right. they all had their little click, but and then um, you know, did everybody they, did they accept you? Did, did did they do you feel like they respected you as a producer? Um, they did. They did, they okay. did, but but they, you know, it was just, I don't know, man. It was kind of like a, I don't know, you know, I ain't or were you or, or 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 were you better than them? <laughs> <laughs> well, I will, I will say this. Okay, I feel like I was more versatile than them. Okay, only because I could do R and B really good, really really good, and they were they were more dominant with the. Uh, with with the hip hop or whatever, you know, with the with the with hardcore the gangster shit. Right. Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. Be, I was I listen, man, I was a no limit fan. Master P, I was telling them on Friday when no when when Master P, man, I was running around, I was running around in Airy Park talking about uh na 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 <laughs> man I <laughs> nigga, you bought it about it. I'm bought it about it. You bought it. I was <laughs> I was on the no limit shit, man, for real, man. I really was, man. So I just wanted to say that, man. I was I was a fan of the whole label. Mia X, come on, man. Mia X don't get no credit. Come on, man. Mm. Do y'all remember that yeah. song? Remember that song? Uh, you don't wanna go to war with a soldier. Oh, that was so. Yeah. yeah. Who done that beat? Who done that beat, Dad? You know who done that beat? Nah, I think that's KL. Oh, yeah, KL. KL. He hammered that. Listen, that yeah. that 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 song used to start fights and where I'm from. He used to start fights when that bitch came on, man. Man. Um, we used to be down there. I remember one time we was down there and um we was in the Bahamas for the BRE. Yeah. We was on the boat. We was all, it was about, you know, 50 niggas on the boat just stomping around to that damn song. And it, we was, I thought we was going to sink the damn boat. Oh, I got, I got another crazy. question. I got another question for you. Who done, who done down for my niggas? Who done that beat? Fuck them other niggas, cause I'm down oh, with my niggas. I, I know, for, I, I know for sure that's that's KLC. That's KLC. Yeah. I think that's K. Yeah, he, he gotta KLC be rich. He Craig, gotta be rich. Yeah, KLC and Craig B is they predominantly did a lot of those, you know, them street records like that. But they they should be rich. But <laughs> hey, did y'all ever did y'all ever cross paths with Snoop? Did y'all ever meet Snoop? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We met. I met Snoop a lot of times. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. I never met him until the Essence Festival at the Essence Festival 2017 when we did the No Limit reunion. I oh, met yeah. him there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <old> Snoop. <laughs> did you did you do any tracks on Snoop's album? Did you get that opportunity? I ne I didn't get the opportunity to do nothing on Snoop. Would you um, would you would you have done it? Would you have done it? Oh yeah, of course. Oh. <laughs> That's what's up, man. That's what's up. Y'all, man, y'all, y'all, y'all got some more, y'all got more things going on than I thought, man. Y'all, y'all was there in the thick of everything. Mystical. What about Mystical? Did you did you do any tracks for Mystical? Yeah, yeah. I did some stuff for Mystical. Um what song? I got, I got um I got one out right now. One 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 of his latest songs called uh Watch That Bitch. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm about to go get that bitch right now. Watch that bitch. Okay. Watch that bitch. Yeah. Oh, I, then that I sound another, another one with um stack your chips. Stack with him your and chips. Be murder. Yeah. Um God, that's are, another one. Are they are they on YouTube? Yeah, all that it's all on YouTube. Yeah. Do you do you got a do you got a YouTube page with all that on it? 
Um, no, it's just all uh, you just have to pull it up by okay, name. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Did another one called for Need Need for Speed video game. We did one. Uh, me and Mystical. Man, look, man, Dez is rich, man. De Dez, man, can I, can I, can I, can I borrow about a stack, man? Can I, can I borrow a stack, Dez? <laughs> man, so stacks, stacks, uh, Dez, and I ain't get, I ain't giving the nigga that roasted me a, a stack. <laughs> hey, man, if I got paid, if I got paid what I was supposed to get, I probably would be in one of them houses like Rick Ross right now. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, man. Well, you know, you keep banging away, man. Because listen, man, you you got you continuing to put out. Some dope tracks, man. But back to back to the backwoods. Okay. All right. You said you wanted to expand your umbrella. And uh, you know what? And now I'm I'm a DJ. I do weddings and all of that, man. And and so like Blanco, I'm like Blanco Brown, you know, the two-step song. I play that all of the time. When I do my when I do my my white weddings, you know, white folks, when I do their weddings, I mean they love that song, man. I get that off all of the time. So I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add uh uh oh, where did where'd he go? Uh oh, you gonna add the bull? Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm about to play it, but it looked like he uh, his laptop went off. Well, anyway, I don't know where he went. Uh, he he went off. Maybe he'll come back in. But anyway, um, you know, I'm gonna just keep saying, like I said, I'm gonna add it to my my wedding playlist, and uh, I'm, I'll get the uh, riding the bull off at, at my weddings with the Blanco Brown two step and all of that. And I just wanted to play. Uh, I think he do got this copy written, so I'm not going to be able to play a lot. I'm going to play about, okay, okay, he, here he come. He's coming back. Hold on, hold on. Yo. There you go. There you go. He back. <laughs> and people blowing up on him like, God dang. Oh, man. Well, I was just telling uh, JP and our, and our listeners and watchers that you know, like I said, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add Ride the Bull to my uh, my wedding playlist, man, and I'm gonna get that off of my parties. I'm gonna, I'm gonna help you promote that, man. Um, Appreciate that, man. I, th I think it, I think it's gonna pick up some steam. I'm gonna play a little bit because you you do got it copywritten, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, we, so yeah. so uh, we we broadcasting live from Facebook, so I only can play about 15 seconds of it. So this is just for my listeners, if you haven't heard. Uh, the backwoods, uh, uh, I'm gonna say new song, uh, ride, ride that bull. I love the way you riding that bull, the way you make them boys drool, it's the way you move. I love the way you riding that bull, booty bucking like a mule. <laughs> that nigga said, booty bucking like a bull, <laughs> like a mule, like, like a, a mule. mule. Like yeah, a mule, booty yeah. bucking like booty, a mule. Booty bucking, a booty bucking like a mule. Yeah, that's what's Got up, that man. Got that saddle, fool. Yeah. Mule, yeah. Yeah, you know, is that is that your boy Jay? Is that your boy Jay singing that part? Who's singing that hook right there? That's me. That's you? What? Yeah. I, 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 I hear that country twang. <laughs> yeah, so, they pulled it off. We got we got the video coming up, man. You definitely got to come down, man. For oh video. yeah, listen, I'm on. I'm on in on the video. Soon as you, soon as you uh, release the schedule and the date, man, hit me up. I'm coming because I wanna. Yeah. I want a booty bucking like a mule. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have the girls, the girls on the bull. We're gonna have uh, the girls doing the mud wrestling. It's gonna be crazy, man. We're, what 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 state? I mean, what city are you gonna shoot it in? It's gonna be in uh, Louisiana, like uh, Baton Rouge area. Oh, that's that's what's yeah. up, man. Yeah, that that's probably about. Uh, yeah, I can come. That, that that's not that far. That's not that far. I don't know if Where I you drive. At? A, I'm in Ohio. In Florida. Ohio. I'm in, okay. Yeah, I'm in Ohio. So uh, okay. you know, we, we we'll find out. I, I could drive it, or I could, or I could fly. We, we'll see. We'll see. Yes, but, sir. Uh, sir. Okay, you know what? You know what? Let me say this, man. This interview went better than I thought, man. I thought it was just gonna be all growls and snarls, man. Like, oh, man. no, man. Man, <laughs> no. chill, man. We the good guys. We ain't got time to be I see no that. Kid, I see yeah, that, we man. Chilling, baby. We man, too blessed to be tripping. Y'all some good cats, man. Y'all some man, good cats. Man, I appreciate cats, man. that. Yeah. I really appreciate that, yeah, man. It's like, I we when you're doing, man, when you're doing good things and stuff is moving, you you ain't really got nothing negative to say. It's like that's why I was like, man, my, I was like, my song is taking off. It's like, right, right. And it's funny. I'm like, all right, I guess, uh, I guess when it's 
three times platinum, it'd be funny too. Right, right. Well, you know what? And in, in my defense too, man, I was on that Michael Jordan tequila too, man. So you know that was. <laughs> <laughs> well, what happened was we we had an in studio interview, and um, and like me and my we we was doing the uh, Big Trav and Hollywood show, and what it is, it's a bro show, and so it's just all you know, it's about the dudes. We smoke cigars, we drink. And every time you come to the studio and be a guest, you got to bring a bottle. And so, so all, so all, all year long, we had been talking about the Michael Jordan tequila, but it's expensive, man. I mean, we can do the Henny, we can do the Remy Martin, we could do the, the $50 variety, but the Michael Jordan shit was like $80 and one fifty. So, so, so. How so much would you get a fifth? Yeah, yeah, we always get a fifth. Always get a fifth, man. So, and that's the real talk. Have y'all had it yet? The Michael Jordan. Nah. It's, called Sin- uh-huh. it's called Sin Cora, and it's a tequila, and the bottle is about two feet tall, man. And it's Damn. like a trunk. Yeah. And so, um, and it's eighty bucks. It's eight. The the small, the cheapest one is eighty bucks. But the dude that came to the studio, he brought the hundred and sixty dollar bottle, and and the most expensive bottle is two thousand dollars. So uh-huh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, man, you know, uh, I, a lot of people is it's probably different to see me doing, you know, country music. If you didn't know me, right? You know, I'm not like JP know me. He know, you know, uh, he know I do all kind of different music. So if you didn't know me, then it probably would be a surprise. But it's like I chose to do the country music because you know, back when we was doing, you know, love songs, man, people was really in love and. But you know now songs, man, is just about fuck you, suck my dick, right. <laughs> coke, and what the pills at. It's like it's on some crazy shit, and it's like I which ain't I, with that. Which, I'm, which I don't mind. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's like I like the, when you can write the, the 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 real songs, man. People listen to the words, and they, you know, what I'm saying, and it's like times is just different, man. It's like. This shit now, and it, it ain't it don't even sound like singing. It's it's like rap singing, and I you know we I came up on the real shit, man. Right, you right, right, right. right. You no know, damn, auto, wasn't no fucking auto tune. If your right. ass couldn't sing, you was getting up out the studio. That's hey, right. Man, hey, hey man, hey listen, man, get up off of JP, man. So what he used the auto tune, man. Get up off. Hey, of JP, no, man. he'll tell you I'm a true singer. He'll tell you, man. That's <laughs> listen. That's the opposite for me. I rarely use auto tune. I like the. Really blow, he'll tell you. Oh no, no you know, only, the only reason why he used this nigga JP is, is bad than a motherfucker. Oh, appreciate it, fam. Yeah. Only reason why he put auto tune on, on there is to cater to everybody else because they, they like hearing that robotic shit. Yeah, that's yeah. what they like. And you know what? And I don't mind. I'm one of the, like I said, I'm a DJ and I don't mind. Lil Wayne used the shit. Chris Brown used the shit. So, right, I mean, everybody right. used it. But yeah, hey man, I'm so, a Jodeci fan. Come and talk to me. I really talk- want to meet yeah. you, girl. Yeah. I really want to know your name. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm from the real singer, <laughs> but you got to use it all jokes aside. You got to, you know, you got to exactly. do, do it modern music. It has its place. It's just Dez taught me how to use it tastefully to get away with it as a real okay. singer still. Okay, okay, now let's let's go here now. Okay, now, okay, so Rico Nim. Are you guys, uh, they didn't have to get, okay, th- I guess they're they're performing as Sons of Funk with RJ. They didn't have to get no permission from, from you guys, or can can they just perform as Sons of Funk? I mean, I mean, what's going on with that? Are they allowed to do that? I mean, technically they not. Te- I mean, they was the Sons of Funk Norvana, which was supposed to be like a new name because they got new people in the group. Right. And me and I mean, Jay was, you know, Sons of Funk, the original Sons of Funk. But, you know, now they they using the name, but it's just, it's crazy, man. It's So it's, let me ask you, have you, have you guys, so, God, so you guys haven't, like, toured and performed a song because that's, those two songs are popular in classics, man. No, we, we, we toured and performed them. That's what they don't know. Like in 13, 14, around up into 15, we were doing some touring in the South. And we was doing we was doing them. All of y'all We've together? Some other show. Yeah, me, Dez, Zoe, and Rico. That's what okay. I was saying. In 13, we came together, was down at the mansion in Baton Rouge where Rico lived. Okay. And, um, you know, we did some touring or whatever. I just kind of agree with Dez. It's like when you talk about Sons of Funk Sound, 
I just think if you're not doing that sound, you should probably do call the group something else. Just for the name, for the sake of the brand. Like when I want to, even outside of being in the group, just as a fan, the music they're doing now, I don't knock it at all. RJ's a great singer. He fits right in with New Age. But is it Sons of Funk is what I'm saying. That's what I question. So, so did you guys hear the song Stupid? Did y'all like the song Stupid? See, there you go. <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm just trying to find out if you want my like honest opinion. I'll honest tell you. Opinion. It's you not that I liked it or disliked it. I didn't think it was probably the best idea playing off the whole Jaden Will thing. I mean. Okay. Well, I'm just going to say, I'm not going to say if it's good or bad, but I'm going to say it's not Sons of Funk to me. Right, okay. right. I'm gonna That's fair. Well, RJ is what? What RJ can't be no more than 25 years old, man. So I think, uh, you know, so I think, you know, I th it sounds like the song is more catered to his his age group, you know, than, than, the old, than y'all yeah. sound, than y'all sound. Correct. So, so it's I mean, like, that's, all, that's all you're really hearing is RJ on the songs. Okay. That's, okay. Yeah. I got a so, question for you, Dad. De Dez, how was, how was the production on Stupid? I, I want a producer's opinion. Uh, it it was decent, it was decent. Okay, it was you decent. Know, you you know who done it? No, I don't. Okay, okay. All right, I just no. wanted to find out. All right. Um. Uh. So so uh. So what's coming up next for you guys? Well, as far as um, as far as what now is collectively? Oh, just, well, no, no, no. Just individually. I mean, I I I, I think my faith in y'all getting back together is dwindling. But, <laughs> but well, I, I mean, mean individually, well, individually, individually. Well, I mean, me and JP and my brother gonna do a sons of, a sons of funk project because we are the the we are the voices of the sons of funk. Right. So anything that we do is gonna when when the fans hear it, they gonna know the sound. They are gonna be like, okay, now that sounds like sons of funk. Okay. I mean, so we we are original members like uh, Zoe. Enrico, they're original members, and you know me, and my brother, and JP, we're we're original members too. So we're gonna, you know, do our little sons of punk thing, you know, just for the right. fans to satisfy our fans, you know. Because we you see Dez being modest, man. We got our own little studio equipment, me and Dez both, man. So we can trade tracks back and forth. I can put together guitar and send to Dez or whatever we want to do, fly vocals back and forth. So whenever the time comes, we definitely gonna do that, man. Now, now, are y'all gonna change? Are y'all gonna change the name to the real Sons of Funk? <laughs> yeah, we might have to. <laughs> yeah, that might be a good idea. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised because that that's what they're doing now, man. But uh, you know what? But you know, at the end of the day, man, you know, we we are black men, and and you know, we black men, you know, we uh we always fight with one another, and I I just hope that uh I hope that in the end that you know, that you guys can, can all just get along and, and everything works out, you know, and, and, and that it doesn't get out of hand, you know, that, that's my hope. Right, uh, right, 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 right. Well, we peaceful uh, loving brothers. It's all good. My brother's just like, you know, it's like a relationship, a marriage, anything. Sometimes people just don't get along and you have to go your separate ways. It don't mean you hate each other. Right. You just couldn't get down in that capacity anymore. Exactly, exactly. You know what I mean? My thing is just being truthful. You, you know, when you're telling right. your story, all this stuff, tell the truth. Exactly, exactly. And, right. and, and you know what? I mean, I I forgot to to add that when I um when I reached out to Rico, he was the most accessible as far you know, when I was doing it. He was just just the most accessible, and so I came across him first. You know, um, we had scheduled another interview, but anyway, I say that to say this that. When I when I uh, when he when I when he agreed to do the interview and I and I and I and I hit him up, I didn't know you you know you just don't know what's going on with the group. You know, I'm I'm like I didn't know if y'all was together, I didn't know if y'all was apart. You know, when you do a podcast like me, I'm kind of middle market, so I'd be happy to get who I can get. You know what I'm saying? And and so it was just a joy for me to put out the promo. Like um, I wish I had I got you original. I wanted, I because originally I wanted the nigga that was like, you know, I know. You know? <laughs> that's the exactly. nigga that I, that's the exactly. nigga that I see, that's what I'm saying. Really. Listen, that's what I'm saying. Now, when you think of Sons of Funk, that's what I think of. That's what made me a fan and want to be in the group. When he was like, yo, bro, you can blow. You're going to be down. I'm like, yeah, man, I ain't your boy Rick, but I, you know, whatever. 
But uh, yeah. yeah, that's the sound. That's what we talking about. Dad's doing some Isleys and, you know, him chiming me in, doing a little soulfulness here and there. And it just, you know what I'm saying? Same formula with the pushing. Okay. And, and so instead, I ended up with the damn backup singers. <laughs> <laughs> See, there you go. I didn't even say that. Well, you know, but it, but you know what? But it's cool. It's cool. No, it's all good, you know, but but it is what it, it is what it is. I mean, you know, well, listen, Des, he, uh, listen, in all truthfulness, we're not being messy, but yeah, when Des put me in the group, he was the lead singer and he made me lead singing with him. So yeah, we did the singing. And when we do shows, me and Des do the singing. We are the singers. Now think about it. If 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 I if I do a promo to my fans and going, I'm I'm interviewing New Edition. Man, they're gonna expect Ralph to be in that bitch, man. They're gonna right, expect Ralph. Right, right, know? right. And then and, and then I show up with with Michael Bivens and, and Ronnie. <laughs> you know, come on, man. <laughs> you know, I meant you know people are gonna be you know hey, you know I, it, it'll be nice to have them. But, you know, but people going to be, if you just broadly say Sons of Funk or New Edition, they're going to expect Ralph and Dez. You know what I'm saying? That's, and right. that's, all, that, that's all I'm saying. I'm not being disrespectful. I'm just, I'm just stating what it is. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, Let me be clear because I ain't being messy either. You know, Rico's a talented brother. He plays guitar. He writes. Um, Zoe's a talented brother, too. He plays keys. So, you know what I mean? I'm not knocking the brothers at all. You know, we just talking about, you know, if we ate greens, we ate greens. I ain't going to say we ain't steak. We ate greens. Right. Exactly. You know I mean? Exactly. <laughs> but you know what? But check this out. You know, I'm blessed because in the end, I did get Dez. In the end, I did. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got the, you know, I know. I got the, you know, I know, nigga. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so and what's what, crazy, Dez being modest, he got some other stuff, man. He sent me some. Like, we just record so much music, man. Me and him both got catalogs of individual stuff. We got a song me and him just did together about, what, Dez last year, three months ago? Dez got yeah. some cold stuff, man, some some cold solo stuff that just, that good uh, classic R&B. He got some cold music, man. He just do. He being well, very you know modest. Come on, this. That's one of them. Hey, hit him with a hey, dance. Yeah. Listen, that, that got Isley Brothers written all over it. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. I, I was expecting I was expecting Ron Isley to come in that bitch like la, 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 la. you just didn't hear the hook. It's called Pretty Southern Girl. Des, give him a drop of your um any um anywhere. Yo. On the anywhere. Watch Exclusive on the Big Trash Q show. <laughs> You know what? You you know what? You know what? Hey, that's a ballroom track, man. That's a ballroom beat. Man, we 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 got some stuff, man. Yeah. I'm, that's yeah. what I mean. I say the sons of funk. That's right. That's, see, right. Man, see, the stuff you just played was why why I done the roast, dog. Because I said, because you go, the nigga that just played that shit done, done a country song, and you be like, wait a minute. You know, <laughs> hey, Dez can do a rock song for you. Dez, you give him a Led Zeppelin, he's something. I know he can. Boys, you give him a, uh, uh, Guns and Roses. 
You I'm know convinced. what I'm saying? Nirvana, you dance is a talent. You name it on the radio, any genre right now, you could do a battle of the beats. I'm I convinced. Would. I can say this honestly. He, I don't know if he know it. I put him up against Tim, a Timlin right now. I really would. There's okay. really that yeah. creative. Okay. He, he can go, man. I'm just <laughs> telling you. Because I've heard his catalog <laughs> stuff that he had, you know, play for nobody. You know, he'll hit me, hey, bro, listen to this. Tell me what he called. But you, it, man. But I'm convinced. I'm convinced that, that Dez is talented, man. And, and it, it, yes, it he seem, is. It do seem to me that you've been overlooked in the, in the, in the producer realm. And, uh, but I'm, but listen, I, 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 like I said, I'm a DJ, I DJ all around the country and, uh, and I'm gonna help out, man. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna play, get me those tracks, especially that ballroom track, because I'm part of the ballroom community. My wife is at least. And, uh, when that, when that's all, is that, is that copyrighted and written, ready to go those tracks? Yeah. They ready yeah. to go. So, so yeah. where, so, so where can I buy it? I just haven't, I haven't, it's kind of been on hold because of the reason why we got to deal with the country music. I was about to, re, I was about to drop this solo album, but we got right. the, the country shit blew up and I was like, God damn, well, fuck. Can well, I, I do can't... both of them at the same time? I don't want to confuse the audience. You know what I'm saying? Well, so I was, well, I, well, I can't wait until you do decide to drop it, man. But if you really want to do a bro a favor, I, you should, you should email me the exclusive <laughs> yeah there you go yeah, let me just let, put a little pack together or something yeah put me a little pack together man and i can start the promo before you get everything going man so that that you know th that'll be great i'm just saying you know whatever you know but but check this out guys man thanks for coming on the big trav and q show i really uh i really respect you guys man and thank you for not jumping my ass and beat my ass <laughs> up in here <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you got, I'm glad y'all are good guys. Hey man, listen, everybody listening and watching, listen, man, we need more thank guys. Thank you for like, playing our music too, man. Any, no doubt, you know, man, no doubt. Play our music, man, we appreciate it. We got plenty of music, man. And you know, we appreciate people tuning in and I appreciate you, Big Dan. No doubt, man, no we doubt, man. Anything I can love, do, listen, listen, man, follow follow the page, man. I follow you guys, follow the page, man, and keep up with me. and. And whatever I can do to help promote anything, whenever y'all got something coming out, man, hit me up. I'll be happy to help to promote you guys. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm a fan. I'm definitely a fan. And, Appreciate uh, you. You guys, man, we got so much music, man. I can't wait. When Dez get through with his country and do his solo, we are gonna do something for y'all with the Sons of Funk. You'll see. We are gonna give. Thank them, you. I know they waiting for more of that pushing. We even did a pushing too. You know what I mean? You might can look it up on YouTube. Okay. It was all of us: me, Zo, Rico, and Dez. Um, what was no it doubt. called? There's inside of you. If you go Sons of Funk inside of you. Inside. Yeah, I think I think uh, uh, Rico mentioned it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to yeah. go check that out too. Cause if it sounds anything, anything in the area that I, I'm loving it, man. But yeah, you know what? Af after this interview, man, I'm gonna be singing. You know, I, I know. know. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Look, well, check this, this is, out, man. This is the good. This is the. Uh, Oh, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. This is the guitar that made that song. L let's see. Let's see. Oh, yeah. This is the guitar that made Pushing the Side. I bet you can't I play it. I, it. I bet like you can't play it. I bet you can't play it. It's probably out of tune right now, but. Okay, I mean, okay, okay. Uh, I won't put okay. Yeah, it's on tune. Hey man, oh, listen, yeah. listen. That's what don't we make, do. Hold on, don't make me go get my guitar, nigga. <laughs> don't make me go get my guitar. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do, baby. Dance put me up on this. Yeah. Uh, hey man, fuck it, man. I'm going to the guitar store after after the interview, man. Fuck it. <laughs> well, hey. Check this out, guys, man. Hey, thanks for coming on the Big Trav and Q Show, man. I really appreciate it, man. Much love. And y'all y'all wear y'all mask and stay safe out here, okay? Okay, you too, man. We appreciate right. you too. Thank hey, you for having bam. me. Bam. All right, baby. All right. That was so. <laughs> Big Diz. Appreciate you.